Hey everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Book Brag. I am here with my co-host Lynn Constantine of the Live Constantine Writing Duo, and we are welcoming author Mary Kubica. Welcome, Mary. She is the New York Times best-selling author of six novels, including The Good Girl, Pretty Baby, and The Other Misses. Mary's novels have been translated into over 30 languages and have sold over 2 million copies worldwide. She's been described as a hell of a storyteller by Purpose Reviews, a writer of vice-like control, I love that by the way, by the Chicago Tribune, and her novels have been praised as hypnotic by People Magazine, thrilling and illuminating by the Los Angeles Times, and her newest book, Local Woman Missing, is out today, and everyone has to grab a copy. Welcome, Mary. It's so great to be here. I think the last time the three of us were together in person was at RJ Julia, right? Yeah. Like two years ago, maybe for, yeah. Years. Yeah. I think it was when the lights go out, came out and it's been too long. I miss both of you. I know. I miss you too. I can't wait until we're all together and we can be, you know, no screens just next to each other. But anyway, so congratulations on your release. Um, and we would love for you to tell us a little bit about Local Woman Missing, what it's about. Absolutely. So Local War Missing is set in um, a Chicago suburb and um, takes place in just, well, part of it takes place in just a couple of weeks where um, two women and a young girl disappear from the same, the same neighborhood. And there's, um, you know, an investigation into their disappearances. You know, everybody wants to know if these are related or if they're isolated incidents. And then over the next couple of weeks, you know, these, these um, there's some leads, but eventually these cases go cold until 11 years later when the girl who was six and is now 17 shockingly returns and oh. you know, just kind of reopens some, some wounds, but also, you know, a lot of curiosity as to where has she been all this time and where are the others? Wow. You've written so many amazing novels and I know it's so hard to keep coming up with these fabulous ideas, but where did this one come from? Yeah, that's such a good question because it always starts as such a, a tiny idea that really, you know, it grows and it grows when I write the book. Um, but, what, but I was thinking about this question and what really started it. And I think that that first spark of inspiration was just this idea that, you know, we hear about people who, um, who go missing and we maybe hear about, you know, when they're found, but we don't really hear what happens next. You know, when they go back to the home they used to live in and they're kind of reintegrated into society and what is it like for them? So that was really, really kind of the first spark of an idea for this book. I wanted to have this girl who had been missing for this huge chunk of her life and bring her back to her family that she doesn't remember. And, um, you know, what is that like for her? You know, and in, in the meantime, there are a lot of other, even bigger mysteries unfolding around this story, but that was really what um, piqued my interest. Wow. That's, yeah, that's fascinating as well as how that impacts the people who love her as well, I'm sure, right? Having this person who's a stranger coming back, right? And it is fascinating. So, I mean, it can, I'm sure you've learned a lot on why you were writing this, but is there one thing that stands out in particular that surprised you that you learned while writing the book? Yeah, you know, I think that the, the thing I learned maybe the most about this book is that one of my characters is a doula, and I have some really good friends that are doulas as well. Um, and so I, I knew a little bit about the, you know, the lifestyle and um, a little bit about being a doula, but I had never really done the extensive research or just gotten to know as much about being a doula and, you know, childbirth beyond maybe what we as mothers experience. Um, so there was a lot of research into that, you know, and it comes into play in the novel. And I think that that was just just, just kind of getting into that lifestyle and what it's like and, and what different things doulas may experience in their, their line of work that we wouldn't necessarily expect. Okay, so we call it book brag because we love for authors to share, um, shamelessly share their best <laughs> reviews um, that they've gotten to date. Okay, and this one was pretty shameless, and I swear my mother did not write it. <laughs> I don't know Crystal who wrote this review, but I love it. Um, Mary Kabika is the ultimate queen of suspense. Local and missing will have your heart pounding, your pulse racing. You may have to stop to take a few breaths before continuing on, and at the end of the book, you will most definitely have to pick your jaw back up off the floor, fix your eyes that are bulging at the disbelief when the whole story comes together and don't forget the paper bag you'll be needing to breathe in to calm down this is probably the best mary kabika book i've read and i already know it's going to be my most recommended book of the year 
I see it also being a bestseller and winning the Goodreads Best Suspense Book of the Year. Highly, highly recommend you go get your hands on a copy ASAP. And when you do, don't let it sit on your TBR shelf. Dive into this baby and make sure you set yourself some good amount of reading time without disturbances. Once you get into this adrenaline fest of a book, it's so difficult to put down. Oh, that is wonderful. wonderful. Amazing. Thank you, Crystal. Yes, really. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to delve off a little bit into your into your world. And if you had to put yourself in one of your characters' roles, other than your main character, who would that be? So it's it's hard because you know there are not many people to envy in this book. I I, I hate to say it, but they're all going through some really traumatic things. Um, but I I think that there's a character named Kate, and I would say her just because she too is really going through a lot in this novel. Um, but she's just such a wonderful person. She's so warm. She's the kind of person that would do anything for anybody. She puts herself in harm's way to help others, and so that's just kind of you know somebody that I would aspire to be. Okay. All right. Now for the exciting lightning round where we get to ask Mary some quick questions, get to know her even better. So Mary, cancer or plotter? Cancer. I knew that, but. I did too. <laughs> We've been on enough panels together. I've heard yeah. of her cancer. Um, introvert or extrovert? Introvert. All right. Cat or dog? Cat. And what is your favorite place to write? At home, you know, and, I, and pretty much anywhere at home is fine. Um, but I just like it where it's quiet. Um, you know, I'll go in a room where nobody else is and just right there. Yeah. All right. What are you currently binge watching? Oh, um, so this is a couple of years old, but we're, we're watching Broad Church. And yeah. we're on the third season now and we are hooked. I mean, I think my husband and I binge watched the first two seasons in <laughs> three nights. <laughs> It's a, that's a great show. I know. I hope they're coming out with the season four. I don't know if they are or not. I hope so. Cause we are just loving it. Yeah. That's a great one. Um, a book you read in one night. Um, Jennifer Hillier's little secrets. Oh, that was a great book. I love that one too. Yeah. And what book do you wish that you'd written? Um, S.J. Watson's Before I Go to Sleep. That's one of my favorites. It's so smart, so suspenseful. I just, I, I love it. Okay, so if you had to do something other than be a writer, what would that be? So I used to be a high school history teacher and I loved it. And it was, I had taken time off of teaching to start my family and the writing career kind of took off in that, in that time, but I love teaching. So I think I would, I would be a teacher. Okay, and finally, what fictional character would you love to have dinner with? Oh, um, um, a farewell to arms, um, uh, Lieutenant Frederick Henry. He's just one of those characters that I, I always loved when I, he was kind of like my first literary crush. And so I'd, I'd love to have him for dinner. <laughs> nice, very nice. <laughs> Don't tell my husband. <laughs> okay, make sure he doesn't watch this or cut it off before, the, before we get to this part. So, so that is it for today. Local Woman Missing is out today. Go order it. Walk into your local bookstore if, you, if you're near one and pick it up. And um, we wish you all great success for it and look forward to whatever is next. Yeah, and tell us how readers can connect with you on social media, website. What's the best way for them to find I'm you? on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. The easiest may, way might just be to go to my website, marykabika.com, and there are links right there to all my social media. Perfect. That's fantastic. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.